Hello, I'm Ramon Kadai, a 25-year-old individual with high function autism. I'm going to first talk about the obsessions I had as a child. As a child, one of the obsessions I had dealt with crayons. I bought a 64-pack of crayons. Um, I've actually bought some of the some children's items because I wanted to get in touch with my inner child. One of my obsessions with crayons is this is the exact order that the crayons were originally in. I've used some of them, but ever since, even when I was a child, a little kid. I had to have the crayons in the exact order that they originally came in. And if for some reason they got out of order, oh, you know, it just felt extremely, extremely frustrating to say the least. Another kind of obsession I have is with Play Doh. If I must play with the Play Doh, um, well, actually, as a kid, like, it was very hard for me to initially play with Play Doh if it was brand new and unopened, like, the teacher gave us Play Doh like this. You see, brand new Play-Doh, unused. As a kid, I'd be like, this is a shape that cannot be replicated. After you play Play-Doh, you cannot replicate this sort of shape. You know, it's impossible. And so as a kid, I'd be enamored and in love with this particular look of the new Play-Doh. And it would be impossible for me to, to really mold it. I'd have to play a Play-Doh that was already used, unless it's just said, you know, you have to do something if you don't. I, I'd just be staring at it for a while because I didn't want to ruin it because I just have a connection to the way it is. So that's kind of an obsession. So even when I did buy the Play-Doh, it, it was very hard for me to actually play with it. And I decided, I took one Play-Doh can, I actually bought a, like a 24 pack of Play-Doh. I took one Play-Doh can, only one, and I completely, you know, crumpled it up and everything. So my solution if I wanted to play the Play-Doh was this. So here's, a, here's another Play-Doh can. My solution would be to play with half of it, and then the other half, as you can see, is not played with. So this half, you know, it's all molded. This half is um, only halfway used. Because, I don't know, it's very hard for me to to destroy something so beautiful. I don't know what it is, but um, <laughs> it's an obsession of sorts. Another obsession as I have as a child, which I can't really offer um, a physical example, because I, I don't have any of my, I don't, I have very little toys left, and, you know, um, I sold off my stars collection, but actually with my G.I. Joe toys, when I open up and play up my toys, I would, um, well, I have this transformer here, um, like it's a little play school Optimus Prime, so I had to get this G.I. Joe figure, this is not a G.I. Joe figure, people, alright, if you think it is, I don't know what to say, and I would have, there would be, there would be the card, the packaging, and there would be like a certain pose. Now, it was a, it was a drawn pose. It was a cartoon. Um, and I'd have to have it in that pose. If I couldn't get in that pose, I'd have to have, to have my mom put it in that pose. And sometimes she couldn't get it in that pose because it was impossible. They are doing something that was physically impossible for the figure. And I would go crazy. It was frustrating. I, I, I'd be obsessed with having a toy in that pose. And for, a long, like for long periods of time... I would just stare at the figure at that pose, you know, and eventually, you know, I might play for a little bit, but overall, I had to have the action figure in that one pose that was represented on the packaging. When I was a kid, before I could even read or um, put things in numerical order, they released these G.I. Joe trading cards, and I got the complete set, and... I was so obsessed, but somehow I knew because they had the checklist. I couldn't read it, but I could understand the checklist. Like I could compare the words on the checklist to words on the card. Now I couldn't actually read, but I could do that. So I was able to, or you know, put the cards in, in the correct order and everything like that, which is I don't know somewhat of an obsession. So having things in order has been an obsession. It kind of still is. Having things you know straight, like like having like the books perfectly straight on the bookshelf. Not having, you know, having everything perfectly lined up. So, if something seems kind of out of order, it's kind of, you know, frustrating, and then I have to make it fixed. But at the same time, I could be messy, and I think other people have lots of could be messy, too. So, it's like, certain areas, you know, they're very messy, but certain areas of things that they really like, they're very precise and exact. And actually, when I talk, usually to people, I'm, I'm very precise and exact. Now, sessions as an adult, well... If if I find you know someone that I really like 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 a, a 
a, a girl that I really, really like and we end up getting together, you know, I can get pretty obsessed with her, so I have to keep myself in check in that regard. But it's not like where I will start calling her every two seconds. It's not that kind of obsession. No, it's more like I'm very careful. I, I, I just try to find out as much as I can about her in subtle ways. So, like, say she invites me over to her house. Like, I would pay attention to the books that she has on her bookshelf. Um, I notice, like, little, you know, maybe if she has, like, certain items lined out. You know, I'd pay attention to the little details. You know, little things out of context that she says in speech. And so I would try to, you know, figure out as much as I can about this person. Um, so I've become obsessed with, with really understanding and knowing them. And so I have a very good eye for detail and attention. Now, obsessions with other autistic people. Well, I believe, you know, it's very possible that other people with autism have similar obsessions. And if you want, if you have autism, go ahead, make a video response. You know, uh, do what I did earlier, show, you know, if you have a camera, go around, show how you're obsessed. Um, you know, show your obsessions. But, yeah, um, you know, people with autism, they could get obsessed about Pokemon. And, you know, they could just have to have all the Pokemon in the video game, all the Pokemon cards. Even dress up as a Pokemon. You could get obsessed about anime. You could get obsessed about math. You can get obsessed about... I don't know, Lincoln Logs for all I know. Toy Story. Um, and, you know, that obsession could relate to collecting all the Toy Story characters, memorizing every line in the movie, um, memorizing all the lines in Star Wars movies. You could get obsessed about history, memorizing all that. You could get obsessed about presidents, remember their birthdays, um, who they were married to, the names of their children, um, all that kind of stuff. Some people do get that obsessed with presidents. And uh, so... But when someone of autism, they usually only have, some people autism only have like one major obsession. Sometimes they have one major obsession and, and uh, two or three minor obsessions. Or some have, you know, maybe, um, you know, at most two or three major obsessions. It usually doesn't go um, beyond that. Usually. You know, some people are very obsessed with astronomy. Whatever. Um, now the question is, is it good to have obsessions? Well... And, and, and how can it possibly, how can one possibly overcome obsessions? Okay. In some cases, it's very good to have obsessions. Like, if you're very obsessed in astronomy, and you have a career out of it, it's very good. Um, other times, one's obsessions do not lead anywhere, and they could even, they become like drugs. Like, when I was obsessed with Star Wars, it was drugs. I spent all the money I made at my job on Star Wars toys. I even overdrafted at my account several times. And every single penny went to my Star Wars toys. Every penny. And if I if I had some money left over, I'd have saved it for the next day. But sometimes, you know, a lot of toys would come out at once. So, but all my money went to Star Wars toys. And so it was like a drug addiction. And not only was it a drug addiction in the sense of how my money was spent, but in terms of how I spent my time, I would just go on in and be like, oh. Oh yes, oh my god, oh I love you my Star Wars toys. And that's honestly how I was. I am not joking you. At all. I wish I was. Um, it was like a love addiction. It's like, oh yes, you complete me. Oh my beautiful, beautiful Star Wars toys. And you know, that's how it felt. It felt like I was being completed by them. You know, it was kind of a love relationship, except for, you know, there wasn't, you know, um, there was no intimacy. Um, and, you know, it all the money went away. So, there you go. Um, and that's how it is like for a lot of people with autism. I'm not kidding you. It really is. And so, you know, um, if you get a crowd out of it, great. Um, if not, well, um to people outside it could definitely seem like a waste of time. And even to us, you know, it, it could, you know, we love it so much, but at the same time, I know for me, it stopped me from growing. I wasn't growing. And after I sold off my stars collection, I really started to grow as a person. And uh, I've really changed a lot. So a lot of things have happened as a result of me overcoming my addiction. So do you want to overcome your addiction? Well. It is the love of your life. If you overcoming your addiction is like over, or is like overcoming, is like breaking up with the love of your life. It's hard. It's a challenge, 
but at the same time you realize that it's not in your best interest that you can become a better person and that it holds you back and so ultimately uh, yes you do want to overcome that addiction unless it's good for you but if it's just taking away your time and money then it really is in your best interest to overcome it um, it really is. You know, you could, you could love Magic the Gathering. And you, you, maybe you're socializing a little bit, but are you really living your life to the fullest? You know, are you moving forward in your career? Are you, are you finding one of your dreams? If that's what you want, you have to ask yourself these questions. If you really want something, you know, sometimes we have to um, overcome ourselves, and sometimes we have to overcome our parts of ourselves that we really enjoy. Sometimes. And overall, it's, it's, it's in our best interest. We, come, we become better people out of it. And so, yes. Yes, sometimes it is a good idea to overcome our obsessions. Now, how does one overcome their obsessions? First of all, realizing it is an obsession. Sometimes, with my Star Wars addiction, my almost part of my collection, because it was ginormous! It was huge! I had this gigantic room of giganticness. It was the size of a living room, actually bigger. It was bigger than a living room. It was a huge, 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 huge room. I had a huge bedroom. I had over 700 carded figures, I believe, or something like that. I had thousands of Star Wars items, and it looked like a museum. It looked like a Star Wars toy museum, or actually, I, there was even non-toys, I had other collectible items. It looked like a Star Wars collectible museum. You know, it was like a miniature collection, like Steve Sansweet's collection, like I had the largest Star Wars collection in the world. It was like a miniature collection, huge, I mean, miniature museum, miniature museum. It was, it was gigantic. My mom was proud. Other people were like, holy moly. And, uh, you know, other people were like, wow, that's an amazing accomplishment. So it looks like an accomplishment. So sometimes our obsessions can look like accomplishments when, when they are, yes, they are accomplishments, but they're also gentlemental to ourselves. And so we have to first realize, even if other people don't realize, that it is an obsession. Um, step number two, how to overcome the obsession. We have to withdraw ourselves. If possible, if you have toys or something, box them up. Get them out of your sight. Um... If you're obsessed with magic cards, box them up. Comic books, box them up. Get a storage unit, put them in your closet. Don't look at them. Um, try not to look at the websites. You know, I had this problem. Even after I started stopped collecting, I had to keep going to the websites, keep seeing what's coming out. I would still go to the toilets. And it's not going to happen overnight, necessarily. If it happens overnight, I'd be shocked. If you can overnight, just like that, overcome your obsession. Never again go on the internet and look up on it. Never again go on the internet and go to the mesh sports. Never again um, go to the store and look for whatever it is that you collect or whatever. You know, I'd be shocked if you could 100% stop it overnight. Because for me, as far as I got, it's still years later that there's still lingeringness of the Star Wars collecting days. But it is, it's, it's, it's okay now. You know, it's like you know, just once in a while going to the, to the toil once in a while checking up on the websites I used to go to. So it's it's under control. Um, so yes, yeah, that's that's step two. Try to get it out of your sight. Because if you see it every day, you're not going to stop your obsession. Um, step number three. Try to find new activities, people to hang out with, etc. Try, you know, um, what is that? That meetup website. I forget what it's called. Maybe it's meetup.com or something. Go online there. Look for new interest. Maybe maybe you were interested in doing something, you know, I don't know, some outdoor activity. Try to do that. Get yourself off the internet, you know, etc., etc., etc. A new interest is good. Look for a new job. Change, 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 change. That's the secret. Change everything. Get some new clothes um, if you can afford them. Get, just start start doing a 180 in your life. Now, to the other people are going to be like, holy, what, 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 what's going on here? What's going on here? That's what they're going to be like. But to overcome our obsessions, we have to overcome ourselves to a degree. And that, when we really overcome ourselves, to, to real, to, one of the ways to do that is to put our bodies, our minds in shock mode and to just do new things.